Hi, welcome to my tutorial on using the KKND2 train editor. Hooray! In this video, I'm going to show you the basic controls and features. So, let's create a new map. Of course, we have to choose the new map option from the file menu, and there are some options. These are simply the dimensions of map, number of squares in X and Y. Below we have to choose is it single player mission or multiplayer map. The size and sync or multi mode parameters can be changed later if you change your mind. Ok, next we need to select the tileset file with KP extension. This file contains all the graphics data, so these are all images of terrain and all predefined tiles which we will use to make our map. The default desert tile set is attached to original editor. For this example, I will use an extended version of desert KP. Ok. The last two options are fill with bitmap number and fill with tile number. If we check one of these options, uh, our map will be filled by bitmap or a tile with ID selected here. I will type here the value 1 just for an example. The editor is reading KP data and preparing tiles list. So it looks like this. Every square has the same bitmap as each other. But we are not impressed by this, so we chose a new map once again. And let's select uh, the second option. I leave this zero here, so map should be filled with this first style. And here we are. Map is for sand, but for this lesson I want to create clear project. Ok, the same as in the original editor, we chose a tile we want and place it on the project view. I paste a few tiles by clicking left mouse button on them. If I want to cancel my choice, I press right button. Fine. Every place tile is a single layer, like in Photoshop. We can select them by left mouse button and deselect by right mouse button. When we select one or more tiles, we can move them. To start dragging, press the control key and click the left mouse button. Now we can release control and move selection. To drop it, we have to click left mouse button again. Or the right button to cancel dragging. We can also clone select tiles by pressing control C. It's like dragging the copy of selection. Remember that uh, cancelling dragging keeps the new tiles in project. So that copy is still here. Very useful feature is selecting with the Alt key. It has two functions. The first one is selecting first unselected and unselecting first selected tile looking from the top. How it works in practice. Let's say we have some tiles covering each other. When I click the left mouse button without Alt key, I can select only the highest tile. But when I press the Alt key, I can select the lower placed tiles. The same with unselected by right mouse button. You see? Good. Ctrl D deselects R, Ctrl A selects R. The second function of selecting with Alt key is selecting transparent squares. For example, this is a tile with some transparent squares. When I click on them, I can't select this object. But when I press the Alt key, voila! Alright, but what if you want to change the order of our tiles? Then we have to use the Shift key. Holding shift and clicking left mouse button moves selection up, clicking the right button moves it down, step by step. 
or if you want, you can bring it to top or bottom by pressing Ctrl U or Ctrl B. There is also option to swap order of two selected tiles. Of course, to delete tiles, we click delete key. Okay, so we have some objects in our project and it's a good idea to save it. For often saves that never raves. Keep that in mind because there is no under option. The best way to save this editor project is save to KL. This format contains all data about our tiles, project properties, imported creatures and even data from KP file. So we're not dependent on additional files in the design process. Sometimes there is a need to cut some unwanted squares from a tile. The simplest way to cope with that is select this tile and choose from the edit menu split selection into sync squares. And now our tile is divided into pieces. How to unite it back I'm going to show you in the next tutorial. But now, a few more words about the interface. As you surely noticed, there are three scroll bars. Of course, two of them closest to the project view are used to scroll through map. To do this, we can also press the middle mouse button, just like that. Or use the arrow keys with or without shift key. The third scroll bar is responsible for hiding the highest tiles. It's very useful when you can't see what is on the bottom. Besides, similarly to original editor, we can switch showing the ground, top and attributes layer. In some cases it is also useful to see the bitmaps and attributes IDs. There is also the minimap that gives us a wider look at whole project. Of course we can change the camera position by clicking on it. Okay, that's all for this tutorial. If you want to remind yourself some shortcuts or other key combinations, they are listed in the controls window. If you have any questions, go ahead, write comments, messages, emails. I try to explain what do you want to know. Thanks for watching.